What do we have today with the current out of the box Power Apps web part for SharePoint? So, you know, if we look here on our SharePoint page, if I want to go and integrate a Power App within this, so I would click on the plus, I would search for a Power Apps web part, add that in here. And then you see the two settings that we have to configure are obviously the link to the Power App. So I'm going to, I want to integrate this timesheet application. So I'm going to copy that URL and I'm going to paste that in there. And really the only thing other than that that we can configure is whether or not to show a border. And you'll notice that when I embed this in with that web part, the Power App is really small and I have no control, you know, even though that this is optimized for the tablet and, you know, in the desktop, it takes up so much space when we're using it in the Power Apps portal itself. But when we use it here and embed it in SharePoint, it's just not really optimized, right? It's just pretty small, a little bit hard to see and to work with. So that was one of the first things that with this web part, Hugo helped us address. So if we go and add his new enhanced Power Apps web part, you'll kind of see the difference right off the bat here. So we're going to click add an app. It's going to look sim similar. And I'm going to add in that same link to the, the app. And you see when we do that, now that's actually taking up the, the width of the column that we have here within the SharePoint page, much easier and more user friendly to work with. So, I mean, this alone to me is a, a big improvement, just you know, seeing visually like the, the difference between this small one and this nice, easy to use. Because what it's doing behind the scenes is it's taking the scale that you have of your Power App. So if I go edit this web part and scroll and open up the appearance section, we see that we can control and customize the aspect ratio. So we can either dynamically resize it based off of that aspect ratio, or we can even define a fixed height. So we can come in here and manually say that this should be you know, like 800 pixels high or whatever we need to do. So we have a lot of good control over that when you're trying to embed these Power Apps in your SharePoint pages. So that's the first thing. Uh, the next big one though, and this one that really gets me excited is the dynamic properties capability. So we know like if we're building like, so Reza just showed us Project Oakdale and all the great functionality we have to create rich uh, Power Apps within Teams. And as part of that, we're able to do things like get the context of the team, see like the channel ID and dynamically pass in properties. Well, with the current out of the box SharePoint Power Apps web part, we don't really have that ability within a SharePoint context. We can't pass parameters. So if you wanted to do something like what we have over here, have a SharePoint list of tickets and then be able to click on one and have it show that relevant ticket in your Power App, we can't do that today with the out of the box web part, but we can with Hugo's enhanced web part. So I've actually implemented this here. So if I click on one of these tickets, you have a power app on the right and you see it takes me directly to that item. And this is again, what really gets me excited about this web part. And it's as simple to configure as if we edit this page, I've obviously added his web part on here. And what I did to make this functionality happen is I've expanded out the dynamic properties. And when you click uh, the option here on yes to and turn that on to pass dynamic properties, uh, we have these drop downs where we can select the content that we want to pass from. So it knows and it's getting the context of every web part that I have on the SharePoint page. So it's going to ask me, OK, do you want to pass in context from this tickets list? So I'm going to select that and then you can define well, what what are you wanting to pass? So you're wanting to pass a column value, for example, which is what I wanted because I want to pass the ID of the selected item into my Power App. So I'm going to select that column containing the filter value. And then it's going to list out, once you do that, all the columns that you have in there that you're able to pass in. So I've just went in and selected the ID column. And then finally, you'll define the parameter name. So this is what Power Apps is going to see to be able to read with the param function and know to get the value. So I'm just going to put that as ID. So from his web part standpoint, that's all I needed to do. Now the rest of the work is on our Power App side. So if you pass parameters in your Power Apps before, it's the same concept. So what we're going to do here is back in our app, go to the app on start, and I'll expand this formula bar out. And you see, I'm just doing an if, and I'm checking to see if we have a parameter called ID. And if that's not blank, I'm going to set a global variable called selected item ID to whatever that parameter value is. And then I want to navigate directly to my detail screen because that's where this information is stored. Back on the detail screen, I'm just going to set on the form the selected item property. 
and I'm going to do a check again to see if that selected item ID is populated or not. Because um, if it's not, then just get the value from the browse gallery because I want this to function both ways. I want them to be able to use the application embedded and submit and browse and uh, submit a new item that way. But then if they click on the item, pass the value. So that's what I'm doing here is use the browse gallery selected if that's blank, but if it's not, look up to our tickets list and find and get the ID with the matching value from our parameter. Um, so you can use this concept for you know anything that you can imagine here where you want to you know, pass data from one web part to another. The other one, so one of the things, you know, going back to Teams apps, okay, we're able to inherit the theme of your team. Again, within SharePoint, we don't actually have that right now, but thanks to Hugo's enhanced web part, we can now pass in theming elements from your SharePoint site to your Power App. So if we go back into the edit mode of his app and expand out this theme property, you see that we're able to, with this drop down, see all of the different variants of your SharePoint theme. So if I wanted to use any one of these, like for example, I have body text selected or a button background, I just select those from the option here. And now I'm able to pass those as parameters into my Power App and customize the look and feel. So um, all you have to do is keep in mind of which one you want to set the color for. So if I want to utilize button background, I'm just going to type that in as my parameter value to look for in the Power App. Uh, and it is case sensitive, so make sure that you're aware of what the, the case is when you're doing this. And even shows like here, so just use a color value param and then the uh, parameter from the theme property that you're wanting to use. So back in the Power App again, if we want to pass these theming elements, we can go into, say, my browse screen and look at this uh, rectangle action bar. And if we go to its fill property, you can just have an if statement. We can check, for example, if I want to get the body text and have that be the fill of this rectangle. We can check if that parameter containing body text is empty. If not, set the color value of whatever that is. Otherwise, just populate it with this blue background. So that, that's what we're doing there. And, so, and we can do that throughout our application, anywhere that you want to define a custom theme to match. Uh, and then any time that you were to go in and change your theme, that property would be updated. Um, so I'm just going to republish that. So this is the, the great thing about his web part and just lots of possibilities. And it really makes you know, integrating your Power Apps within SharePoint just that much more powerful. And with that, I think I'm going to turn over to Hugo now just to talk a little bit more of, well, how do you actually get his web part installed so you can start using it and go over a little bit more details there. Awesome. Thank you, April. So the first thing we would do is to go download the web part. Now, this web part is available as open source. So if you want to, you know, to look at the code yourself and make changes to it, you can absolutely do that in the GitHub repository. But if you don't have what you need to actually build the web part, we've actually created the pre-built version of the web part for you. We've included the URL in the presentation, but if you go to this GitHub repo, which, which is the SharePoint, the, the Microsoft SharePoint web parts samples repository, and you go to the enhanced web, uh, Power Apps web part, you can just download the SPPKG, which is what a SharePoint package is. Once you've downloaded it, you go to your app catalog or you ask your SharePoint to go to your app catalog on SharePoint. If you don't know how to do that, uh, you go to your SharePoint admin center, which is usually your SharePoint tenant dash admin dot SharePoint dot com. And from there, you will go to more features. And then apps. And that will take you to the place where you manage your app catalog. Now, uh, if you have never created an app catalog for your SharePoint tenant, clicking on this link here will prompt you to create an app catalog. But if you have an app catalog, it'll actually just take you there. And when you get to the error app catalog, you want to go to the library called Apps for SharePoint. And you just want to upload the file that we just downloaded. So I'll just go here. I'll go to my downloads, SPPKG. The first thing you'll notice is 
it asks for your permission. Now, this web part requires absolutely no permissions whatsoever because it's running in the context of the user. But it's always important when you add custom web parts or custom solutions that you pay attention here to what it says. This is only saying it will go to your SharePoint online. It's not asking for special permissions or anything like that. Once you have deployed this web part, it should show up here. And that means that now it will be available for people to add it to their site. To add it to your site, you go to any site that you want. Uh, so I'll just take the uh, crisis management site here and you go to your settings, click on add an app. And if the demo gods are with me, we should now have the React Enhanced Power Apps client side web part. I know the name is not very fun. It's just a default name that it gives when you when you add a web part or when you create a new web part. So here uh, it will it will take a few seconds to add it. And I don't think the page refreshes itself automatically, but if you just kind of refresh this a few times, eventually it will show up. But thankfully this is like a cooking show. I had prepared things in advance just to make sure. So once the web part has been added to your site, you can just add it now to a page. And just to show you how I would have done that, I would just go here, I would just insert web part. And then if you look at enhanced, there's an enhanced web part here. And this is the part that uh, you've already seen April demonstrate. But some of the things that I wanted to show you uh, that are also available here, and April did a great job at demonstrated the concept of the dynamic properties, but there are a lot of dynamic properties that are available to you. And it's worthwhile exploring that. We have a few more minutes, so let me just show you. So the first thing here is when you select, yes, I want to pass dynamic properties as a parameter, it asks you what you want the source to be. And the default source that April used was a web part on the page, which was this web part here. Um, if you have multiple web parts on a page, you can actually connect these web parts together and, and or have one web part connect to multiple other web parts, which makes it great because you can do a master detail kind of uh, look. But if you click on page environment, which is the environment or you know, the information about the, the page in which this web part is running, it actually extracts other things, including things like the site properties which would be things like the URL of the site, the name of the site, the classification, the title, description, and so on and so forth, which you can use. So you can actually have different flavors of the same Power App app, depending on where it's attached from. The current user information is also available, so you can leverage that to take advantage of things like username, uh, email, or login name. And, one of the cool ones is the query string. So the query string allows you to, whatever URL will be called when you display the page, whatever comes after the question mark here will be available as a query string parameter. So if you click on query parameters, now here you see by default, the, the page just says mode equals edit. So the only property that should be available here is mode. But if I change the mode here, see you'll already pass the edit property. So if you wanted to add more things, you can create URLs here and add more parameters in here. Again, it's a great way to do this. And then the search, this is great. If you actually embed a search web part into the page, you can take advantage of the search properties to actually retrieve the information. So in this case, the only thing that would be available is the search query. But now that would allow you to actually have a page in SharePoint that can search the search results from SharePoint and also do a search result from your Power App environment. All right, so just one last thing that I wanted to point out here is that there are there's always this one parameter that we pass all the time, which is the locale information. So you can actually create uh, localized versions of your Power App apps. So if you want to have a, a different Power App or different resources that load based on whether the, the user speaks uh, English or Spanish or French, you can absolutely do that. That's always passed. You just need to use the Pram locale. Now that's pretty much it, but wait, if you order now, you can also use your, your, uh, <laughs> your page to embed it in a Teams. 
right? So this is the same page, and uh, there you go. So I use the same page here, uh, but I embedded it in in the Teams environment. So the great thing about this is now you can build something again, a master detail uh, situation that is using the context of the page, but embedded inside of a, of a, a Teams. I could remove all the heading and all the stuff and make it really look like it belongs inside of Teams. But that's pretty much it for me. I, I'm always looking for suggestions on ways to improve. Uh, as I was telling April, I've been working on adding the ability for it to list all the apps that you have so you don't have to copy and paste the URL. Uh, but I'm looking for more suggestions. So if there's anything you've always wanted the out of the box web part to do, just let me know. And yes, if you order now in the next 30 seconds, we'll also include another web part for you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. For <laughs> wow, is there a shipping and handling fee? <laughs> <laughs> Operators are standing by. <laughs> so how about we take we make an Oakdale Power app and we put our charting components in it and then we stick it on a SharePoint page with your web part. And then we pass in the color scheme of the SharePoint site. When you click on a list item, it gives you a chart that shows the details for that list item and the chart matches the color scheme of the SharePoint site. So basically we learned how we could do that exact thing today with like writing hardly any code at all. We did. It's That's very inception-like. Very cool. Thank you both for sharing that.